Hi everyone, you're welcome back to Delores Studios. This is a continuation from the previous video. Now we'll be diving deep into the layout files. We talk about the layout, the drawable, the menu, the, the navigation, also the values, uh, which comprises of the, the string, uh, the colors, and the dimensions that were used in this application. Without much ado, let's get that started. We have a couple of layouts here. Uh, based on the design we have, uh, we're going to be creating a bottom navigation uh, where we're going to be having pre-menu uh, first for the present day, uh, for the weekly and also for the share uh, as what we have from the, uh, the screenshot of what we had earlier. I'll still show you uh, which uh, you have something uh, similar to these. Okay, so you're going to be creating a screen that will be look like this. Uh, the bottom navigation will be underneath while the fragment will stay right above the, the navigation. So how are you going to achieve this? You're going to achieve this uh, using uh, the bottom navigation. We'll be including the drawable uh, as well just to uh, let us have the settings and probably you want to have the about of the application or you want to have more menu right there in the application. So you're going to wrap these around the draw layout but the focus will be on the bottom navigation. So the draw layout is the top uh, tag or the top view, uh, which is going to wrap uh, around uh, all the other components. In there, you have the constraint layout, as you know, and uh, the bottom navigation follows uh, where you need to constrain to the bottom of the parent, and uh, you actually need to call its menu, uh, which is pointing at the bottom nav menu. Uh, that's actually going to inflate uh, the the items that you're tr trying to make it made visible in the bottom navigation. The fragment uh, houses are uh, the contents of uh, the, 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 the whole uh, layout entirely. And uh, now you're going to actually attach uh, the fragment to the navigation using the nav graph. You point at the nav graph, pointing at the navigation folder, uh, mobile navigation as a file of the navigation. And not only that, you need to point at the Android name called the nav host fragment. So from here, you, could, you will be able to replace fragments on the fly. You don't need to uh, keep track of uh, the fragment that gets uh, deleted or not. You need to do that on the nav graph. So in the nav graph, you'll be able to point at the different fragment, the point of entry, the point of exit, whether you need to pop or you need to exit uh, from uh, the... The particular fragment. I will point out uh, you if uh, you get this clumsy, uh, you could check out my video basically on Quiz uh, app where I use a lot of Android navigation uh, to actually uh, flip around questions and take me back to the beginning of the question. So I'd like you to get your hands on that if you find it a little bit uh, hard to understand the Android navigation. You need to bring in the navigation view. Uh, which are actually going to hold on to uh, the, the, the drawer itself where you have the nav drawer as the menu to inflate and you could create an header layout as well uh, which, which is going to serve as a banner. We'll get to look at all those layouts. Uh, firstly, let's look at the nav header uh, which is going to actually going to be for the, the drawer. Uh, all right, uh, you could see it right there. Uh, it has uh, an image view uh, which you could serve as the logo of your application and the text view which could serve as uh, the title of the app and uh, a, a short description could be an email could be something it could just be a profile of that particular user so that's that for the nav header and we're going to inflate our three fragments home weekly the third could be a mere share so you may not need to actually create a a uh, a, a fragment for that but for the first fragment, which is going to be the ohm itself, uh, you need to create something uh, that looks exactly like this, which you have a big banner, and uh, you're going to have the thermometer, the humidity, the wind, and also the UV index. Uh, this is an image with the text just by the side. I use a constraint layout to actually get this kind of a little bit complex uh, uh, layout. So if you're dealing with complex layout, I will implore you to use constraint layout. You need to actually uh, use your uh, your floating, uh, your constraints very well. So it's actually going to sit side by side. Even uh, it's, when, you're, when you're rotating the, uh, 
your device, you're still going to have that fluidity, that same uh, look and feel. Uh, I actually use an Nestor scroll view because of different screen density. We have different sizes of screen. We have some Android devices that are so short and we have some that, 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 that's uh, way, way, way long. So you, I will employ you to use Nest Test Scroll View when you actually don't know. Uh, and this is actually going to handle inner screen so that you could be able to scroll if uh, the screen is small so that you have a cropped kind of uh, uh, view when you are displaying your mobile application. So I'll leave you at that to go through that uh, in the source code. I'll be sharing the source code uh, in uh, the description of this application. Now the weekly. The weekly is actually going to uh, undo uh, the days that uh, probably you have uh, today as Saturday. Uh, it's going to actually start from Sunday because Saturday is the present day, which is going to show at the, at the big banner. And you start from Sunday down to Saturday or Friday. It depends on how many days. Probably you seven days. So it's actually going to count the days that you'll be using. So we'll be using some logic to actually pop out the present day from the recycler view so that's why you have a recycler view here which is actually going to give you the list of the days that you'll be listing out and a recycler view is always attached to an item i hope you know that by now so any recycler view must have its items so what are the items here are uh, the items so is so basic where you have um the drawable by the left you have ice cloudy i could actually bring in that drawable uh, no problem with that. We have a text in the middle, which is for the day. We have the temperature itself and its description just sitting side by side. So I use a relative layer to actually make that relative to each order by putting it left you no, know, and uh, to the end of each of uh, the view. So you get that. Cool. Now, while uh, we have the settings fragments, I actually created this uh, for us to be able to tweak uh, the settings. Uh, we need to actually make changes. Probably we want to bring in a new city and uh, we, put, we might decide to change uh, the number of days we need uh, the, the, uh, the, the application to return the weather uh, analysis. So we could decide to pick 13 days, 14 days. We have to pick 7 days. It depends. So this setting is actually going to make you uh, do that. So and uh, I actually use the data, uh, which is the data binding itself. So we'll be talking about data binding in the settings alone. Uh, you could extend it to other uh, fragments, but in here, once you understand how to use data binding, it's going to be cool for you. Uh, in here, you're going to call the variable. You, you use a, a layout tag to wrap around all your, your views. So once you do that, that's the first uh, parent tag. You pass in the data. Which data are you uh, tweaking around? Because now you'll be, you, for, for example, if you have a text view, you need to pass in you need to set text so you don't actually need to do that in your java code or in your kotlin code so you could actually pass the variable right there from the pojo probably just setting that so that we're going to be having a pojo of settings fragments and uh it's going to have a name of settings and at the same time we have to pass on the city and the number of these which are all string value so you just need to do that in a value of Text, if you could notice, look at the dict text, it's going to actually bring in the city itself. That's the value you're passing in and the number of days. So that's also the value you need to pass in. So if you're actually setting to a text view, you could also do that. You could point at uh, the, the class that you're calling, which is definitely going to be a data class in Kotlin or a Pojo in Java, and you set the value at this point in time. So you don't actually need to do that in your code. So from there, you could bind Data. That's that's text binding, that data binding in Android. So I'm we're going to actually cover this in uh in the settings uh aspect. So uh, a quick dip into the menu is just the basic menu you know the, for the bottom nav. You're going to give it different items from the nav drawer. If you want to give menu other nav, so you also it's actually going to give its item. The navigation we'll be talking about the navigation when we create uh our our fragments because uh, it depends on the views or, or the or the activity. So it, it, it actually uses fragments and activity. So it, it's not only uh, limited to fragments. So when we are dealing with the UI, we'll be bringing that in into the nav host uh, to actually uh, bind or, or to, to create navigation from one fragment to the other. We'll be talking about that right there. But I've created 
a basic uh, file called mobile navigate underscore navigation that is actually going to handle our navigation in uh, the navigation folder. So that's just it. That's the basic aspect of the layout. And uh, we have Dribble files that we, we actually brought in, which are actually a vector drawable that depicts different menu, different icons in the application. I'll be committing into another branch called layout. So you could pick out this and also continue from here. And uh, in the next video, we'll be talking about uh, the database room itself, uh, the DAO, the data abstract objects. We're talking about retrofit. How are we going to make the network calls? How are we going to bring in the UV index? And at the same time, we're going to bring in the daily uh, forecast. So we'll be looking at that in details before we actually move into aspects of the app like the, the, the dependency injection, uh, the adapters, the UI, the fragments and likes. So we'll be actually picking this in, uh, in segments. Uh, so uh, I would like you to stick by it and you're going to actually understand it. If there's any question you need, just drop any question in uh, the, the, the comment section. I will actually be there to answer any of your queries. And at the same time, I implore you to please subscribe to the channel, share this video, share it to your, to your friends, to your colleagues that would actually benefit from this. Thank you very much. Don't go anywhere. The, sec the third video will be right back. Bye-bye for now.